Hey everybody, it's Warp Jester, and welcome back to the first episode of Warp Jester Does First Looks. Uh, today, we are playing uh, not Minecraft, believe it or not. I actually had a good friend of mine uh, made a post on my Facebook uh, page for Warp Jester Gaming saying, uh, hey, uh, all the videos are uh, Minecraft. What's up with that? Well, Minecraft was what I've been currently into. However, uh, there's something new that has come up, and I am lucky enough to have the time and ability to take a look at it. This is EverQuest Next Landmark Alpha. Yay! Um, I actually uh, signed up for the uh, uh, Founders Pack Alpha Pack so I could uh, get in check things out here. And I uh, want to get a first look at it. Now, I'm going to give you guys a uh, disclaimer right now. Uh, I have had, like, zero time playing with this game. Um, it's been literally a, a few minutes here and there in between uh, taking care of uh, <laughs> taking care of reality and other things. Um, so I really have not had a chance to really dig deep into um, what's going on with it currently. Uh, I have tried to read it a little bit on the forums uh, and the FAQ. Um, but basically, what EverQuest Land or EverQuest Next Landmark is is a sandbox game. It's kind of a companion to the next uh, installment of the EverQuest franchise, which is going to be the EverQuest Next series. Um, what makes this game interesting and unique is the fact that it's got, as you can see here, destructible terrain. So I can actually go through and actually dig out and actually dig myself a hole, dig into a mine, uh, mine resources. You can see on my uh, chat channel here. You can see all the stuff I'm digging up currently. Um, so similar similar to other sandbox games in that sense. Um, this is alpha, so I'm going to give the disclaimer right now. They just lifted NDA uh, just a couple of days ago. Um, and so they're allowing people to stream and record and chat about the uh, games. That's why I wanted to get on and get this up so people could see it. Uh, what do I know about this game so far? Um, it's pretty wicked fun. <laughs> it is alpha, so it's got its little quirks and other weird things. Um, the world we're in is a test world. It does get reset periodically, so I've uh, had to reset, rebuild, and redo a few things. Uh, not a big deal. Uh, it, it's, you know, like I said, it's alpha. It, it's kind of funny, too. I, I got I to put, uh, put a note here. There's a lot of people in this. I mean, they, they've already had to expand uh, to a couple extra worlds just to keep up with the demand of people uh, wanting to get in on this. And uh, it's been very active. I've had a lot of chatting with people, uh, back and forth, asking questions, getting help. Um, look at that. I just dig a hole here and just left a whole bunch of stuff behind. Um, they, the, the, the chatter's been very kind in, in game. In the forums, it's, it's kind of interesting because the general feeling of the forums has been pretty broad, uh, end to end. Everything from, you know, Hey, it's alpha. We totally understand when you know there's server downtime or there's a glitch or you know something weird happens. Uh, we're here to help out. We're here to report stuff. On the flip side, we do get a lot of people on the forums that are just you know, so oh my God, I paid for early access and it's not even working right. Da, da, da. Well, <laughs> again, this is alpha. Welcome to what alpha is. If you're curious, look it up. <laughs> so. Uh, I am I am definitely the uh, former, not the latter. I am here to uh, enjoy the game, check out what it has to offer, ooh, and uh, be able to provide feedback, bugs, uh, bug reporting, etc. Um, I understand, respect that uh, you know things are going to bork now and then, and there's going to be issues. That's not a problem at all. Um, this is the way things are. So let's talk about what this game potentially has to offer uh a lot actually um there's still a lot of learning as to what's going to be what again there's actually uh sony's actually kind of releasing two games in one if you will or two two different games on, on the same architecture which is going to be the everquest next which is going to be the next uh mmo the kind of successor to eq and eq2 um, but in addition to that, they also have this landmark edition, and this is a, again, a sandbox version, uh, game where you're going to be able to set down a plot of land, mine resources, as you can see I'm doing here, and, uh, build things, build elaborate things. Uh, if you want to see some ideas of what can be built, there is a lot of video up on the, um, EverQuest Next and EverQuest Landmark, 
uh, YouTube channels. They do some great little, uh, not so much tutorials so much as videos on what can be done, what's possible with this game, and uh, gives you a chance to uh, see what they're doing. Um, I look forward to both. I will definitely be playing both and see where my interest lies. I will be see. I'll be very interested to see if they can actually pull me away from Minecraft. That'll be a feat. Uh, <laughs> so as you can see, I've been rolling around the, the the train here again. This is a test world, so not everything's enabled. But you can see the the animation, the effects uh, when you do jumps. Uh, you can slide down hills. Uh, right as of now, everything's very limited. There's not a lot of um, weirdness in terms of like you can't fall off a steep cliff and hurt yourself for the moment. I'm not sure when that will change. Um, most of the stuff, they may have changed it during constant updates. Most of the stuff is basically just kind of surface finds for veins. If you look around here, what I'm pulling up right now is some copper out of the ground. And you'll notice that it's very neat how it breaks everything down. Now, this world is a what they call a voxel environment. And a voxel environment is a destructible world. Uh, the best thing I can associate to since I played is Minecraft. So I, forgive me if I start associating to Minecraft too much here. But the idea is kind of similar. The difference, however, is that the size of the world that can be destroyed. Uh, the voxel size, give you kind of a visual here. I'm going to go ahead and go to my build mode. That's a voxel right there. Now, this is a build mode. I can actually build stuff. I actually put down material. And as you can see, it starts actually building out. And I can change the size. I can add to it. If I have a plot of land that I've claimed, then I can actually place down materials as well as pick them back up, um, adjust them, heal them, etc. And so it gives you the ability to, to goof around and add stuff, which is kind of neat. So this is the idea here. Again, you have voxel about this size. When you're mining out areas, uh, you're going to be able to break up chunks or basically voxels. But as you can see, the train has this nifty kind of abstract randomness. So it gives it kind of a, a unique uh, uh, natural look, if you will. Um, you will be able to do a lot when it comes to uh, harvesting materials as well as being able to build. Um, don't be disturbed by the fact that I've got this big square looking thing I just put down. Um, tools wise, you actually have the ability to do slopes and even spheres as well as some other uh, nifty elements. So you do have that ability. I'll give you again a real quick uh, look here. If I do a sphere for example, let's go ahead and do actually Slope in here. Actually, I don't know if I can do it here because this is a uh, uh, a non-claimed environment, if you will. <laughs> yeah, let's see if I can do it. Hold on. I was able to do it the other thing, right? Yes, it is. It's still a little quirky. I'm not exactly sure I'm doing everything right either. So, <laughs> again, full disclaimer. Um, but anyways, so yeah, you'll, you'll be able to soften corners, uh, create perfect spheres, not these blocky spheres, but actual real rounded spheres, uh, and other material, uh, with all, all, all kinds of materials. Um, again, I'm right now you see I'm pulling up dirt and stone and copper. Uh, copper has been a fundamental resource, easy to find, same with tin. And as you can see here, I'm kind of actually missing some stuff over here. Let's get this little stuff here. Uh, you see, it, it looks really nice. I wonder if that's tin. Um, and I can actually literally dig myself into a hole. So as I'm digging away at this vein that starts bleeding down, I've had you know, copper tins lead into tin, uh, copper veins, excuse me, <laughs> lead into tin veins, um, and just kind of dig down for a while. And I've actually, one time I decided to just, you know, dig for the sake of digging and have dug down pretty deep. Now, uh, tools wise, you do start out, uh, with alpha pack with, uh, the, um, founder's pickaxe or combo system. Oh, yep. There we go. Got some extra chose down here. Looks like tin. See? Copper along with tin. Uh, <laughs> so with uh, with the uh, Founder's Pack, you do get a lot of stuff to start with. Uh, you get the uh, Founder's Pickaxe. Now, one thing I'm already very tickled about, pardon me to get a drink here, uh, is this pickaxe is nice because it's a combination of pickaxe and uh, regular axe for chopping wood. So you can actually trap down trees in this game. Um, but it's a low-tier item. It's actually uh, uh, a low-tier pickaxe. It only does so good. So you start out normally with a stone pickaxe. This thing's a little bit better than that. But beyond that, you actually want to work yourself up. So I got myself a swan, uh, a swift bronze pickaxe, which as you can see has a size area it can hit, I believe. 
Again, <laughs> it's still new to this, still figuring things out. Uh, damage value than speed. And then finally, what I just got uh, uh, enabled here uh, is my iron pickaxe. Iron pickaxe is the best I can make with the workbench that I had available. Um, I'm not sure if there's a higher tier or not. I'm sure there probably is. We can see I've got a uh, stone forge and a uh, uh, saw table. Uh, those things are going to be able to put down on my plot. I'll try to get that today if I possibly can. I'll be honest with you, laying plots right now is pretty difficult uh, just because it's so crowded. Uh, in addition to that, you get some other additional fun stuff. Like you get a master's bracer, uh, which gives you plus to your crafting. Um, crafting quality, if, if I understand things correctly, when you craft things... Uh, both you and I will craft things that aren't exactly alike. So you notice, like, for example, with my bronze pickaxe, it's an 81.84 speed, 44.85 damage. There's some variance there, I believe. When you make the, make the item, depending on your crafting skill, it may have a different quality value. Uh, so that's, that's been my experience so far. Um, there's other little things you can do, too. There's, uh, I have some torches here to light things up. There's also cosmetic stuff you can make, chairs, and so on. Again, I'll probably do like crafting stuff and show that to you in a second video, just because I don't want to <laughs> don't want to insult you with my uh, my silliness. Um, with the founders pack, you also get the uh, trailblazers flag as well as the explorers flag. If you go look up uh, founders packs on EQ next, you can still get them. You can see with details of what you get for every tier. But you also get some cool outfits as well, so you can do. Uh, uh, fantasy style or uh, sci-fi style. So those are kind of fun. And then last but not least, we've got some uh, rings of bounty to give you more resources as you're harvesting. So those are kind of little boosts to get you going. I like it a lot because it, it's a great way to get somebody into alpha so they can test and kind of get things moving for them so they can figure things out and get a feel for the game. And that's nice. And these are things that can carry over to the main game. So when it goes into beta and finally into release, I will have these little little items that I can place in my world and kind of show off, which is kind of cool. Um, but they're not overpowered, which I really appreciate. They're not uh, not too OP or anything like that. So I'm not getting any real advantage over people starting later other than early access to play and test and have fun with it. Uh, other little bits, I got a Void Fall, which is a, basically a place I can set down and have more storage access. And they've got all the tools and stuff you have here for building and deleting and healing, which is turning the ground back to what it was. So, that said, uh, let's talk about materials here as I stand in a hole. I just, I have to get this. I, I just, I can't walk away from, uh, this I looked at. I've, I've gone to holes before. I'll see just a smidgen of copper kind of hanging out on the side here. And it's just like, you know, eh, people can be sloppy about it. I'm meticulous. Whoa, hey, how's it going? That's some, that's a clipping issue. <laughs> so this is a first-person view. You can actually uh, get uh, change your view by uh, uh, using the shift scroll wheel. So allow you to zoom in, zoom out. You can get a, a good wide view uh, or a tight in view. So lots of goodies, lots of stuff. Um, so yeah, like I said, you can dig yourself a hole, you can go all kinds of places. Uh, in the future, as I'm to understand things, uh, there'll be more interesting stuff to dig down into. They'll actually have caverns and uh, caves and, and all kinds of fun stuff to find. Um, so it'll definitely be something worthwhile to kind of dig into. Whereas right now, you know, you kind of dig a hole just to dig a hole. Uh, <laughs> it's not the most exciting thing in the world. So um, I just I can't get away from all this. It's so fun. <laughs> I love digging holes. It's sad. <laughs> All right. Uh, just so you see the field of view here. Get a wide one here so you can actually see around a little bit. Um, if you look around, you can see those little markers in the sky. These are actually the plots of land. I'm going to go ahead and show you the map here and give you an idea um, <laughs> just how crowded it is right now. Yep. Every single square you see there, that's a plot of land that's been claimed. Um, there's actually two parts to a plot of land. It's really hard to show it here. But if you look... Oh, good. Can I find one that's not overlapping horribly? <laughs> if you look carefully, you'll see a small square right up here. This is the actual claim that people can claim. This is your own personal space. People can't come into and dig on it and screw around with it. Uh, and you can build your house, build your, your mud hut or whatever. But then there's an additional area, a bigger area that's around it, as you can see here. I'm not entirely sure or understand how this all works just yet. I can come into this person's area around here, and I can mine, dig, cut down trees, etc. Um, but I can't drop a plot in this area. I'm not entirely sure. So again, uh, very, 
very early on. Um, a couple of options here. You can see I have my claim. I haven't actually put a claim on uh, a couple of the servers. It's kind of weird how they set up here. But you can see I've got a claim over here. It actually glitched. I actually have a couple of claims. It's kind of strange. <laughs> Again, alpha. Give it time. I'll keep the things up. Uh, if you want to see the map in kind of full here, this is a, a test map so you can kind of get an idea of uh, the area we have to play with. It's a huge area. I mean, walking from the middle point here, the spawn point, out to the edge is probably a five, between five and ten minutes uh, of just constant running just to get out to the edge here. So this, this, is, a, this is a good, good area um, to run around in. So you can see how many people we've got from all the uh, plots we've placed down. Um, biomes wise, they haven't enabled much. I haven't really paid attention to what all is around in terms of what's there. Um, you will see, uh, in the kind of a shaded tone here, the, uh, you'll see, uh, unnamed world brook tier one, you'll see tier two and tier three. Uh, you get these kind of sandy areas that seem to be very, uh, prevalent with stuff, uh, to uh, dig up. A lot of, I see a lot of ores, a lot of stuff there. Um, you see here, I'm, I'm inside of somebody's claim and I can't do anything with it. So it gives you an idea here. You can see the claim borders. Um, yeah, so there's a lot of different areas to look out at. Uh, it's actually very pretty. I've actually sat and watched uh, the sun and the moon go over. There's actually twin moons out there. i uh, be very interested to see what the, what the lore is on that. Uh, let's talk uh, materials here real quick. Uh, there is a lot being added almost every day. Uh, from this little sidebar right here, you can see I have a couple uh, main materials here. I'm not sure how you change to identify what they are, but they're like dirt and rock, basically. But anyways, uh, if you walk down here, you'll see uh, materials. We've got metals, we've got woods, and we've got stone. Now, under the metals category, right now, we've got your tin, you've got your copper, and then you've got your iron. Uh, at this point in time, that's about it. But you'll notice in here, this shows you a whole bunch of different materials that can, that can be made into, as from what I understand. I haven't gotten this far yet, so I'm still kind of gray area. But basically, a lot of materials here you can build with, I'm assuming. Uh, tin, you've got one. Uh, copper, you've got one. So, <laughs> kind of limited. Wood-wise, you've got some uh, plain wood. And you've got this they're called burled wood. This stuff is a pain. <laughs> Absolute pain pain to get it's it's uh sparse when you're cutting down trees this is a kind of an uncommon item to drop it's not rare but it's uncommon nonetheless but you can see you can make wood planks out of this this game building materials and then uh here you've got dirt and then you've got stone you can make a whole bunch of different stone designs which is really nice um and then you've got gems down below there's nothing nothing really set for them just yet uh, again on this tool uh tool tip here now you can see how much of the stuff you have which, by the way, seems to carry from server to server. I'm not sure if that's staying or what the deal is there, but nevertheless. Nor do I know if there's any limits to how much you can have. Um, but again, you also have your uh, shapes tool here. And then finally, you've got your templates. Now, this I find very interesting because with templates, the idea, from what I understand, is that you'll actually be able to create uh, these, these, these big projects, these big builds um, of any say, sort and type and then you'll be able to create a template of it. And the idea is you'll actually have a uh, a marketplace for these templates. And you can actually make real-world cash off of building nice stuff. So all these guys out there, they're very accomplished builders. Uh, <laughs> pay attention because people will actually uh, uh, potentially pay you know decent money for things. How that market will be, don't know. We'll see what happens when it gets enabled. So that'll be fun. Um, beyond that, really and honestly, like I said, it is a first look. I'm just getting into it, kind of getting used to it. I am uh, patiently trying to take the time to read up on all the comments and uh, uh, details people are posting about. Um, I'm actually taking time to answer questions as much as I possibly can. I try to, try to be helpful whenever I possibly can and uh, be kind. And uh, just try to get a feel for... Uh, how the game works and plays. Uh, just a real quick little peek here. This is the uh, base crafting bench uh, they start you out with at the spawn area. Then you can make your own and plunk off somewhere. But as you can see, you've got pickaxes you can build here. I can now build up to a silver steel pickaxe. I'll probably get two as soon as I can here. <laughs> um, and then you've got some additional stuff. So you've got axes here. I uh, currently have a copper axe. 
and then you've got accessories. So you can see we've got a light stone, we've got grappling hooks. Metal wise, this is where you can refine your metals. So you can see you can get ingots. Oh, I can now get tungsten. That's a new one. Hey. Uh, props. That's another fun one. So you've got the uh, stone vault, crafting stations. Uh, that includes the uh, stone one here, the marble forge, as well as the uh, saw table that I use to get some of these things up and running. And then finally, build tools. And this is really neat too because, uh, as you can see here, the actual tools you use to build and design, I showed you a little earlier, these are actually just like any other tool. You actually have to craft it. So that's really neat. So in order to be able to actually go out and build your mud hut and build everything else, you actually have to learn how to. I think that's really neat. And I'm really looking forward to the potential there. So that uh, gives you an idea of it. Again, uh, next episode of this, I will be uh, diving a little more into detail regarding um, the crafting process. Um, I'll show you where my uh, claim is on a different server, and we'll see about getting some things set up and start playing around a little bit and just see what we can build and uh, have a little fun with it. So that's it for now. Uh, again, really looking forward to this game. I've actually been uh, watching this for a while. I think this is a really, really neat, new, innovative look at the way the game is. I highly, highly, highly encourage that you go check out the EverQuest Next, EverQuest Next uh, landmark uh, YouTube channels for Sony. They've got a lot of good uh, videos in there, uh, snippets and bites and information, and uh, roundtables and etc. They give you a lot of detail, explain everything uh, much better than I <laughs> ever possibly could. Um, so definitely check them out. I'll try to remember to put a link in the sh in my uh, show notes to uh, put you there. Um, yeah, that's about it for now. Uh, again, uh, I thank you for watching. I will certainly try to be putting more of these up as I have time here. Uh, my real life has been uh, stomping all over my uh, playtime, so, <laughs> so it's been a little bit difficult. Uh, that's why my uh, my Minecraft uh, episodes have petered out for a bit, so I apologize. Uh, but by, as always, please, 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 uh, if you enjoy... Uh, this, uh, by all means, uh, leave a like below. Uh, I will definitely put out more of these episodes of uh, this if you enjoy it. Um, this is definitely just a first look at this game. However, I am definitely going to go ahead and spin into a uh, Warp Jester does my uh, sorry Warp Jester does EverQuest landmark uh, series as this progresses, and uh, I will be pulling in additional uh, Ball Rocket gamers uh, along with me because I do have uh, five beta keys. Uh, so I will be uh, pulling in likely people like uh, Turgo and uh, Seshi and so on so they can join me and play. So love that. If you have any questions, comments, curiosities, something you want to know about the game uh, that I haven't answered already, uh, by all means, leave comments down below and I will be more than happy to uh, uh, try to answer them in my next episode. And of course, as always, if you enjoy this or anything else, by all means, please leave yourself uh, or subscribe to the channel, and I'll uh, certainly enjoy uh, talking to you more. Ring as the phone rings. Thank you again, guys. Have a good one.